Welcome to the August 15, 2016 uh, meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. I'd like to start the meeting by saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight's decision will be published in the Record Journal on Friday, August 19, 2016. The effective date of your variance will be Friday, August 19, 2016. The date a certified copy is recorded on the land records. The statutory 15-day appeal period will expire on Sunday, September 4, 2016. If you commence operations and or construction during the appeal period, you do so at your own risk. Uh, first off, I'd like to appoint uh, Christine Tata to sit, uh, vote for Bill Bernie. And anybody here for application 16-020, Booth, uh, it's been postponed till next month. Okay, first application 16-019, variance request from Brosnan for a side yard of 10 and a half feet where 20 feet is required. and. 20 feet exists to construct an attached garage at 7 Donut Drive in an R18 district. Do we have any correspondence, Mr. Secretary? Okay. Yeah, come on up, take a seat. And could you please state your name and address for the record? Good evening, everyone. I am Jocelyn Brosnan, 7 Donut Drive, Wallingford, Connecticut. Explain your application. I have applied to turn my carport into a closed two-car garage. It is currently a single carport with a one-lane driveway. I have two vehicles. Um, I also work in an operating room, and when I'm on call, I need to have my vehicle clear of snow. So if I'm parking one out in the lane of the driveway, then there will always be one in the snow. Also, I have two daughters that have two cars that park currently on the street. So we have a total of four cars in a one-lane driveway. There's currently a dog shed there that was built by the previous owners, and I don't think I'd be going more than about three or four feet past where it currently sits. Are you gonna be enlarging your driveway also? Yes. Has anybody got any questions? I've spoken with my neighbors. They're all right with it. Okay. Is there anybody who uh, wants to speak against this application? Anybody want to speak in favor? Hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and open up for discussion and possible action. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve to a better use of the, uh, the property without altering the character of the neighborhood. Second. Motion to approve, Mr. Wolfer. Yes, to approve. Mr. Knickerbocker. Yes, to approve. Mr. Rice. Yes. Mr. Ruzek. Yes. And Ms. Tata. Yes. Your application's approved. Sweet. Thanks. <laughs> Wait till after the 19th of September, the 4th of September to start, correct? Correct. Very good. Thank Next you. application, 16-021, variance request from Petrillo for a frontage of 125 feet where 150 exists and 150 feet is required in a lot area of 39,396 square feet where 62,500 square feet is required to subdivide property at Six Country Way in an RU40 district. I have some uh, correspondence oh, yeah, on this. Yes. There's a letter here from uh, the zoning office, Casey Costello. There's also a uh, letter from engineering and a letter from inland wetlands. Okay. Please state your name and address for the record. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Gary Petrillo, Six Country Way, Wallingford, Connecticut. Go ahead. You can explain your application. 
this is a lot. Uh, it's going to go a little longer than the first one, I think. But um, you want me to start from the beginning or just what I'm proposing? Could you use, uh, bring the microphone right. closer to you and make sure you speak into it every time? Okay. Sorry. If you need to have a visual, you can bring it up here, and there's a microphone over on the table. Okay, where can I set this? Right up here on the easel. Oh, there's the easel. Okay. Okay. I'm sure you read everything, but I'll just go over briefly um, how all this came about. Um, I'm an electrical contractor, and in 1994, I was wiring my daughter's house that Sky Builders built, Anthony Poloni. My wife liked the area, and uh, <clears throat> I had a drawing I made years ago of a large ranch with a three-car garage. And I asked Anthony if he had a lot that would fit this long house. And um, I gave him the drawing. And I'm not sure how long it was right after that, but he gave us a ride in his red truck. And he showed me a couple lots. And one thing he noted was, he says, these lots, lots may not fit your house because they're about 125, 120 feet wide. But he says, are you serious on your side garage pull-in? Which I was, my three-car garage. I didn't want the doors facing the street. And he says, if you make a three-point turn, it'll probably work out. And I said, no. So we drove around, me and my wife, and um, he had no lots, and I asked him about this lot on Six Country Way. All his equipment was here. And the six foot um, Russian olive trees were lined up about here. And he had piles of loom and his equipment. So I asked him about this lot. And he said, that's actually two lots. And he said, um, my wife and I are moving from here from Rhode Island and a family member's moving back here. Thus, he had no lots. About four months later, he called me up to come down to his office, and he showed me this map. Because I didn't see this yet, he just told me there's, it's two lots. So he said his wife decided not to move in the front lot. It's available. And he made a little sketch, and he showed me how my house would fit. It looks something like this. And he showed me there's about 17 or 18 feet to the right how he had. First, he had to flip the house. He had to put the garage on this side. I had it on the other. <clears throat> the reason for that also was the slope of the yard. If he put it the other way, my house would have a high, high concrete on the side where, you know, he says it wasn't, it wasn't appealing, but he could do this. So basically, he had the house at 18 feet, 85. He says, I have to have a 30-foot driveway to turn in without backing up, which it works perfect. And there was 10 feet to spare. So there's the 143. And he said, you could never fit this on a 125-foot lot. But he said, this lot is absolutely perfect for the house because as it goes to the rear, it gets wider. And he moved the house, he showed me how he's going to move it back, and he assured me that this will fit. And he says, I may have quite a bit of slope here that I won't be able to cut the lawn, and I might need ground cover, which we did. It was too steep. And he said, and this won't be interfering for my relative. And he said, <clears throat> Do you want to do the same as your daughter? I'll let you do the electrical. And I, I said, yes. Delete that or give me a credit, you know. And so he says, I'll call you when I get something prepared as a budget, because this was a 
pencil sketch I gave him, some ink of my house. And about a week later, he called up, and I went down to his office, and he said, the relative decided not to move here. I don't know why, maybe there was a relative of his wife. So I said, oh, okay. He says, but the thing is, you have to buy the whole lot, the whole parcel, which kind of scared me because, uh, you know, I'm selling a house that's worth about, it was budgeted as a, a 90,000, 92,000. It did sell for 90. So I said, wow, this is going to be, you know, buying another lot, I'm just looking for one house that fits. So I started to think, and I've been in construction many years, and I says, what if I do the HVAC, the plumbing, the electrical, the heating, and other things I bought, uh, I ended up also buying the steel beams in the basement, and we bulldozed the backyard, because he only allowed 30 feet Actually, my son did the bulldozing. And um, he said it'll work out a price. So, basically what happened is I bought the whole lot. He did design the house just as it is. This is totally clear, 25 feet. Uh, my woods go right about here even though I own all the rest. And I haven't looked at this map or any of the documents that you have in 21 years. So what happened after that was that we're getting older and I had back surgery 30 years ago and I'm trying to downsize and maybe get a smaller house. My son, family of five, he's looking to get in a bigger house. So we were talking just before all this took place, and my wife said, what if we put a little house here? Because we wanted this lot for my son. We said, gee, if we have to take all this, maybe my son Gary can live here someday, and my daughter's right down the street. And that's the main reason we bought this. It was two lots, and my son will live here. So as things went on, uh, my, my aunt passed away, years ago, and I had this little house that I had to take care of, and my son got married. And when you're first married, you can't really afford a lot, so we put him in this little house in North Haven on William Street. And in a year, we gutted the house, new electrical, new plumbing, new heating, and my son and I did all the work. And now he has a family of five. So we were thinking that my, house, my son could take my large house, which is way too big for us now, and we'll put a small little house here, and he's right, right close by. So I took this drawing, which is down to planning and zoning, not knowing anything about <laughs> what conspired since, and I saw Casey with the, the real map that you have, and I said, what do I have to do to put a little house back here? And she looked it up. She could not find this two-lot scenario. She looked on map 217. She sent me the plan uh, to um, town clerks and the assessor's office. They showed this exact design and all these measurements, exactly what you see here, not this. And not, sorry, not this. So make a long story short, no one had this, and Casey said to me, um, it looks like an architectural scale. I'm wondering if Giuliano made it because they did the whole, the whole uh, area. So I took the drawing and I went to see Chris Giuliano and he looked at it and he says it looks like an architect's map because it was based on, I think it was one inch is five feet or one eighth of an inch is five feet. We don't do that being a surveyor. So after a long talk about what's going on, he said he would do the variance I need because Casey says you need a variance for this area because now it's 62,000 square feet, which I knew nothing about. So 
Christopher mentioned one thing, and that was the strangest thing of all. He says, I'll do the work, I'll get all you need for your variants, and I'll do the drawing. And if it's ever approved, I'm going to make you two deeds. And I says, what, what do you mean two deeds? He goes, you need a deed for here, and you need a deed for here. And I left, and he gave me a price, and I went home, and I, my wife said, how's, how's things going? And I said, good. I says, it's a funny thing. I said, let's look in the file cabinet for another deed. See if there's two deeds there. There's got to be one. So she went in there and looked through it and took the deed out, and she said, where's your drawing? There's a lot of measurements on here, and I didn't understand them all, but we started looking at it, and some we couldn't find. I, I didn't know where these measurements came from. So I made a copy, and I went to see Chris. And Chris looked at the deed and looked at this, and he has all of these drawings, uh, 3413, 3455, I believe. He said, your deed is wrong. I said, oh. He says, don't worry about it. I'll fix everything. So what I did, gee, my deed is wrong. I went back to the town hall. And I saw all the people up in the clerk's office helping me out to figure where they finally did a section of land here, what they thought was uh, an easement for wiring, uh, telephones, something. So we're looking at this, and she figured out, I forget the lady's name, I've been there probably 12 times. She found out that the lines seem to end here. So she said, let's look on this side if there's an easement. And that lot nine also referenced this crazy measurement. And we couldn't figure it out. So I made a copy of that, and I dropped it off with Chris. And he says, oh, don't worry, I'll take a look at it. And I'm sure if you read everything that was in my folder, you know what happened is this land was taken from phase two, my lot, and sold to lot nine. And when he told me that, I, was, I just was livid. I, I couldn't understand it. I went back to the town hall and looked at all of these maps again. Nothing ever showed it. Not only this didn't it show, it, all these measurements were still the same. And I documented that there. I said, I might as well show these people. So I had a deposit on this lot on April 7th of 1995, as, as shown as um, Countryside East Section 2, Lot 30. And I had to give him a $5,000 deposit because he says, people are going to want this property. Do you want it or not? And I gave him a $5,000 deposit, which you have a copy of. And then we went through all the pricing and everything and the deductions, and then I had to give him another 11000 on um, July 15th when he gave me the drawing of my house, the real architectural drawing, how my house looked, all the measurements, windows, and so forth. And we agreed on everything, and the house basically started uh, July 26th, I think. So, again, I didn't look at any of these drawings until when I approached Casey. And then I looked at more drawings and going over everything in my files. And as you see in submittal, I think three, I found the closing documents. Everyone was signed by either banks and lawyers. And um, Anthony Poloni and his group of people. And it, everyone showed uh, lot 30, section 2. Nothing was shown as land was removed, reduced, or anything. And those documents, I think, are L and M, M and N. My book's over there, sorry. So all the documents were signed that it's Countryside East Section 2 by everybody at the closing. 
And I don't know if I got a copy of the deed that day or if it was mailed. But again, it went in the folder with everything else 21 years ago. So now I started to look at everything when, because Christopher said to me, your land was removed, and he showed me how it was done. And I, was, I just couldn't understand why the land was taken, first of all, off a lot that I had a deposit on. My house is being constructed. All the documents are there on the closing day. And the measurements in the deed show that this land was taken from phase two and sold to phase one. So I started documenting everything I could and the requirements for the variance. Uh, and the hardship is not in the land. Um, the hardship is that I believed a reputable builder, he had a scaled map done in 1995 showing me two lots. He set everything up to make it fit to leave this here and I, I believed everything he did. I had no reason not to. It's an architectural drawing that you have. He's not moving here. Now his family's not moving here. Gee, my son might move here someday. It's going to be a lot to afford, and that's why I had him reduce all of the HVAC and other things that went with it. So then, um, meeting with the town hall and with Amy and things, I had to find out what I really needed to come here today. And so basically, uh, the 40,000 front, even with the 125, without this meets the RU40 um, requirements. It stipulates that the land must be, I guess, 150 frontage to have a rear lot. But as you can see by the way this land is unique, my house not only fits on the 125, and you have the pictures, but on uh, drawing map S, there's 11 more lots, rear lots, that have front property, 11 of them, only up to 120 wide. And then as far as the back, so I'm within the guidelines of the cluster, sorry, the cluster, requiring 125, I'm equal to 11 lots doing that, and my rear lot is equal to 10 other rear lots that don't have the required 62,500. So basically, um, that's where I am today. And I did make notes in there that there's a lot of trees out here in bush, and I just wanted to put a small house here, uh, low profile. It's not uh, going to be detrimental to the neighborhood, because the lot is equivalent to 10 others. Mine is in the rear of all houses. I'm not blocking anyone's view. There's no water here, as we dropped off those maps today. And um, I'm not blocking anyone's views back here. It's just in the rear lot of mine. And instead of my son building here, which was the original intent, and if you've seen pictures of my house, it's, it's a very large house, and he's looking for a house. And I'll say right now, he can't afford my house. So this is not... This is not a financial gain. He can't afford my house the way it's listed today. He would have to have this discounted by $100,000. And I would move back here and build a small little house. That's where we are today. Uh, I believed that this was a real map. I believed that he was here, but as I speak to Amy and others that Zoning laws changed, and uh, they said this could never have been built. 
the way he wanted it to. Maybe his first design in 84, or prior to 84. But I mean, I got this in 95. This is what I saw. And yeah, it's a hardship on me because I, I, I hate to think that I bought a worthless rear piece of property and been paying taxes on almost two acres all these years. But, I, but it does um, conform to 10 other rear lots. It conforms here to the front that there's 11. It conforms here that the RU is met at 40,000. Uh, the access driveway goes straight to the back. This is all flat property, needs no alterations. There's no ponds, lakes, or streams. If this is granted, this is not setting a preference to this neighborhood because nobody has this kind of history behind it. If someone says, oh, look, we have land in the back. I have 126 feet or let's say 152. I can do that. They don't have this. They don't have the history behind all this that I've given you. Yes, I've given you a lot because I wanted you to see how this came about because it's absolutely unique. Uh, not so much in the lot, whether I got duped or whether he didn't know or whether they, true, he didn't want to move here, but the other absolute uh, amazing was the removal of the land and put over here. Now this map, I, if you look at map J, Big map, I'm calling it uh, Christopher Giuliano's map two. It shows, it shows the, the front and rear lot with the, with the driveway. I just see one to make sure that's the, does that show the driveway? No, the one that Christopher Giuliano made. Is this from uh, Giuliano himself? that show both lots with the dimensions or it's the he has two drawings there let's see I may that's the one could you just tell them what map is that two of two two of two yeah see I labeled these uh, in my in my exhibits I and J I think that's J but if you look at that map that Christopher Giuliano made. It's identical to this map from 1995. The only difference is where this land was taken away. But it's the same square footage, it's the same access, it's the same corner, if you look at it here. And Christopher said, Either an architect or an engineer made this for him. This is not something that he drew up in all of the measurements and angles. Someone made this for him with the intent he was moving here. And Christopher made the same map for the variance meeting. And the first map that he has there shows the new footprint of this lot and the new footprint of lot nine. And I guess you need that for your records to put into the, because that's something real. I mean, uh, I guess I don't own that 35 feet anymore, but this, this fella does. Did uh, Christopher say that these were the original uh, maps that were um, submitted to um, PNZ for the Building of the subdivision? No. Are these on record? No. They're not. He made this for the variance meeting. The, the, okay, he got, he got all that from... No, here's, here's how that happened. I showed him this map, because Casey uh, Costello says, go see if Giuliano made this map, because they did everything. And I showed him this map, and he says, let me look at it, and he made a copy of it, and he says, 
we never made this map. But I can do, and he said the same thing as Casey said, you don't have enough land up here, you need a variance. He says, I'll do your drawings for you for the variance meeting, and I'll show the two lots. But afterwards is when we found out this was missing, and he also made that map too. Those are two brand new maps that were made maybe a month ago. Who told you that that was part of the deal? Uh, the, the Developer? The deal? In other words, the, the lot line that is missing, or now is missing, right. was originally told to you it was there? Oh, yeah, this is the map. Right. Yeah, this is the map from 1995. Okay. Who, who submitted that map? Or this is Anthony Poloni, Sky Builder's map, gave me this. Okay. And he submitted that to? No, he didn't. They can't find this map anywhere in the town records. Do you need me to explain more? Than no. That? Okay, 95, this is what he showed me with his intent of two lots. And the only thing I'm saying that this has got to be really valid is because when I went to Christopher Giuliano to draw the map for my variance meeting, he used this same technique of the separated of the two lots I think the size is a little different. It's 40,080. But he used, in other words, he didn't cut the lot like this or like that. Christopher did this basically the same setup that you see here, except on that second drawing, I'm missing, I'm missing um, 35 feet here, which, found, which we found out as you can see by the documents, aren't going to lie. Everybody signed off on Countryside East Section 2, Lot 30. Not Lot 30 minus 35 feet by 257 or 247. That was a shock, and I didn't know that for 21 years. And the reason is, if Christopher didn't say to me, You're gonna, if this is approved, you need two deeds, I would have never been looking in the file cap. We wouldn't have known this. And if this was approved, I would have thought this was my land, and it would have never been, you know, this corner. So this is why I said this, if this is approved, it's not going to set a precedence in, uh, in the neighborhood for sure. The problem I'm having is your hardship. Yeah. That's the problem. Your hardship sounds like it's with your developer builder. You're right. And uh, we've seen this before. And you have? Un unfortunately, oh. um, we need to see a hardship. Well, the only thing I can say is the hardship is from the 1995 map of two lots to today's uh, I mean, I, I, zoning requirements. I understand and I feel for you that, you know, you thought you were getting this piece of property yeah. and, you know, come to find out 21 years later, you're, you don't have yeah. the full. And believe me, I never did anything with this. If, I had, if my son wasn't looking for a house and, I, and we decided to downsize, I would have sold this and showed the realtor company, here's two lots. Be known to me. I, I'm having uh, trouble with this. If the rear lots, it says that in zones with minimum lot area of 40,000 square feet, which you're in an RU40, so your minimum lot area is 40,000 square right. feet, the lot shall have a minimum of 150. 62,500 square feet. Yeah, that's this. Yeah. So you're short there, you're really short now as a result of, of what your developer did to you. Yeah. You're, you're not, it doesn't, it doesn't meet the, the, the requirements for no, but, a rear lot. Uh, the only thing I can say is there's, on map G, there's 10 other lots that range from 0.82 to 1.2. 
that don't have this either. There's 10 other lots on, on my drawing G. Yeah, I'm having a hard time. I mean, your hardship is that you have a lot of land. We should give you a variance because you have a lot of land. I, it just, it's, it's hard for me yeah, to I come know. to grips with that being a, a hardship. Well, believe me, I didn't even know I would be at this point in the, you know, I went here with a map to, Aunt, uh, to uh, Casey saying, how, would, how do I put a house on here? I've got this is, this is what developed here. I mean, I had no idea that I'd be. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Chair, one more comment. But um, I mean, you hired this developer to, to build the, the house for you. I mean, granted, you did the electrical and all the other things. Well, I did that so I could afford. I had to buy the whole parcel. And then you bought it from him. Right. So this is, there, there's some case law that says that when you've hired the person who has done this to you, it's a self-inflicted hardship, which is another reason that we can't grant a, a variance. Well, I didn't self-inflict it, it was... Well, the case law says that if you've hired the person who has done this... I had a person that I guess was fraudulent. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't cause it. It's not for a financial gain, because I put so much extra work just to be able to purchase it. I haven't done anything to try and get any money in 21 years. It's because now uh, my son is fine in his little house, but they're looking for a bigger house. Yeah. You know, and that's what brought this on. So I, I thought the hardship is in the land, and then I don't know what, because some was taken away, or I mean, that's why I came here, um, just to show you that I documented that there's 10 lots, also less, and they have lots on them. There was no, uh, there was no hardship on those lots. There's 10 of them. They're all reduced, and they're all less than 125-foot fronts in the front. Some are 105. And that's your Exhibit G with all the blue... Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. Now, not only is the G equivalent to all my land in the rear, if you look at S, drawing S, it's the last one. The, um, if you see the RL underlined in red, that shows 11 front lots that are in front of the rear lots that are supposed to be 150 foot fronts. They're all less than 120. And I have 125 and here's how it fits. I mean, there's no mistake there how this fits. So I'm covered by the 125 because there's 11 other houses that were built this way. I had the R40 in the front meeting the requirements. I have more than enough land in the back based on those 10. No, I don't have 62,005, neither do those. But um, I'm just trying to put a little house here that's uh, in the center of the property and low profile. Mr. Chairman, yeah, go ahead. I'm sure you've tried to speak with Sky Builders. What was their comment? Did you approach no, them on this? Absolutely not. When I found out that this land was sold from from Christopher, yeah, I don't even want to talk to the man. I don't even want to talk to the man. I have documents there signed by lawyers, banks, himself on the closing day. Every item on that closing day shows the lot is Countryside East, Lot 30, Section 2. Not minus 25 by 257 feet. That was all signed by everyone. And then a deed comes out, a deed I see, 21 years later, only because Christopher said, 
If this is approved, I'm going to make you two deeds. And no one found this drawing in the town hall, which made me say, hey, maybe I have another deed, and it wasn't listed like this, you know. But the numbers didn't, the numbers didn't match up. So, that's why I went to the town hall um, clerk's department so many times trying to figure out where are these measurements on my lot. And they were very helpful there. Uh, we thought this was an easement for something. Pipes, underground utilities, you know. Yeah, this is unique, all right. Um, I hate to think that I bought a worthless piece of rear property paying all the taxes all this year, all, this, all these years. Do you have any more? No. no. Is there anybody here to speak in favor of this application? Anybody to speak against? Do you have any more? So I'm going to close the public hearing and open it up for discussion and pop, pop, possible action. Can I go sit down? Mr. Chairman, that was as professional a presentation as I've ever seen here. Um, I, I totally get what happened, but unfortunately, I, I can't see having land in Wallingford as a hardship. I mean, I, I love this town, and I think having land here is a good thing, and having more is obviously better. So I, I just don't see a hardship. And the other thing that I worry about is that his hardship is brought about by the contractor that he himself hired so it's a self-imposed hardship that he's presented. And so for that reason, I'm making a motion not to approve the variance. Second. Okay, motion to deny, motion to not approve the variance. Mr. Wolfer. If you say yes, you're not approving it. The motion is to, to deny, deny the, the variance. variance. Motion is to deny, correct? Okay, so you say yes, it's yes to deny. Correct. Yes to deny. Mr. Knickerbocker? Yes to deny. Mr. Rice? Yes. To deny. Ms. Ms. Tata? Yes. Mr. Ruzek? Yes. Variance denied. Your variance has been denied. Okay. Thank you for letting me present my evidence of what took place. It was a good presentation, I'm sorry. You know why? Because it's the truth. There's no, it's easy for me to talk because it's, it's reliving it, you know. And you had all the documents there for us. I, I thank you for that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Can I have a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Before we adjourn, I, did, I, I do want to tell the board something. This, I believe, will be my last meeting as a ZBA member. I've had some family issues pop up, and now is a good time for me to, uh, to leave the ZBA. Um, I believe that next meeting, if he should be appointed, my replacement should be appointed. I, I believe that what's going to happen is uh, Dave is going to become the full-time member, and then we'll have a new alternate. It's not that the chairman is mad at me. <laughs> the chairman of the party is not mad at me. Well, I'll, I'll just say, um, you're going to be missed. You're, you put a lot into the meetings. You're always well informed, and uh, you, you will be missed. Thank you. Ditto. You, you, you've done a very good job for the town and its people. Thank you very much. Um, also, I'd like to say that uh, Mr. Knickerbocker also has given uh, many years to this board, and he has chaired the board as well for a number of years. And uh, all, and that's where I'm, I came in, I think it'll be 10 years I've been here as well. So uh, you've been here a little longer than 10. So you've just given this board a professional look all the time, and your opinion is very, very good. Your attention to detail is super. 
you find the little small things that help us make the right decisions. And hopefully uh, we can continue uh, from your knowledge and knowing you and what have you that uh, we'll continue to move forward and uh, always think of you. And yep. I know you'll move forward. It'll be fine without me. I know. You got it. <laughs> and I will miss you all. And it's not, it's, I, I, I'm definitely going to miss this. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.